Hello and welcome to 7 Days of Let's get straight in there. There's been an outbreak in London of caterpillars. These caterpillars are venomous and can cause asthma attacks, vomiting, skin rashes and more. Hair on these caterpillars cause things like fever and irritations and eyes and the throat, the Forestry Commission warns. These caterpillars have 62,000 hairs that they can eject and these hairs can be dangerous for up to 5 years. In other, wetter news, a whale shark has broken the world record for the longest ever trans-Pacific migration. The whale shark is the largest living fish, reaching 12 metres in length. Smithsonian Tropical Research Institute researchers managed to track a whale shark that migrated all the way from the Eastern Pacific to the Western Indo-Pacific in over a 12,000 mile trip. In drier news, the survival of gorillas in African forests depends upon guns, germs and trees, says scientists. A decade-long study found that there are more gorillas around than estimates made before, but most are living in areas that are unprotected, at risk to poaching, Ebola and the destruction of their habitat. Moving on, Indonesian officials have announced that they've spotted two new Javan rhino newborns this year. This is after the death of an adult male, so the current world population stands at 68 individuals. The rangers are very pleased that the birth rate is currently higher than the mortality rate. And in the psychology world, horses can remember the facial expressions of people they've seen before. This is all according to a study done by universities of Sussex and Portsmouth, which involves seeing pictures of an angry or happy person. This changed the response of the animal when the horse met the actual person that same day. What's crucial here is that the horses seem to be adapting their behaviour to this. Going into paleo news now, some pretty cool paleo papers have emerged this last week, including this one, an analysis of biomechanics of theropod feeding strategies. By looking at the microwave on various fossil teeth, researchers found that the coelurosauran theropods fed using a method known as puncture and pull, in which the animals bite down then pull their heads back to tear off the flesh. This method is in use today by such animals as the Komodo dragon, which provides useful comparisons. The paper also concludes that the Troodontids had teeth that were not well suited to awkward biting angles, and so they likely played on softer, easier to consume foods such as invertebrates or other small animals. Looks like there's more to say about fossil teeth this week, as another paper that's just been published has described some fossil pliosaurid teeth from Russia. It's been previously considered that only one lineage of pliosaurid made it to the early Cretaceous from the late Jurassic, but these new teeth suggest that another group actually crossed the boundary too, existing alongside their relatives for around 25 million years, and showing that their disparity actually increased around the boundary before decreasing later on in the Cretaceous period. Did we mention there's a new tape here? Sadly, it's only a fossil one. The discovery of an ancient tapiromorph was reported this week, coming from 50 million year old rocks in Wyoming. It's currently being prepared for study, and could potentially be the largest mammal found so far in the formation that it's from. It might also support the idea that tapirs originated in North America, before heading south. The fossil was actually discovered back in 2016, but it seems that its existence has only been announced to the public this week, although we may have missed an earlier announcement. That's it for this week, I'm actually recording this on Tuesday so anything in Wednesday's news will be missed unfortunately as I'm busy tomorrow. Anyway, we'll see you on Sunday and have a great week.